So there are ways to get around that. One way to get around it is to use a command called traceroute, which is what I'm going to show you right now. It's very much related. Uh, before I do that, let me go ahead and save this uh, so we have it for future reference. I'm going to call this uh, lesson um, ping, and then we'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll just go ahead and start up a new session with um, Wireshark for the um, the other one. So I'm going to do file, uh, actually I'm going to go to capture and go to interfaces again and I'm going to go to options make sure that uh, promiscuous mode is turned off, it is still and hit start. Okay I'm starting fresh here and I'm going to kind of hit the same sites I just hit, just do it real quick, get the data captured uh, trace, so I'll explain what this means later trace RT uh, the first one we went to was Google, www.google.com this will take a little longer so while it's taking time to do this, I will uh, mention what it's doing. All this is doing, it's a variation of the ping command. It's pinging every router along the network that's responsible for forwarding these packets from the source to the target. So it's just kind of a way to get a, an idea of the latency or delay in the network. You're getting some statistics here for millisecond delay, and that's at each network hop or route or router I should say along the network until we get to the final destination which is Google so I'm, let me just go ahead and keep doing this uh, I'm gonna do this to I believe Stanford now still got my protocol analyzer running this can be useful when you have a site that times out on ping like San Diego State we'll see we'll be able to get some statistics for it and then the last uh, hop that is to go to that uh, server for San Diego State will be blocked off, but at least we'll be able to get some statistics to measure delay on the network. And you should, as a network troubleshooter, you should be keeping an eye, on, an eye on these numbers. If any number sticks out like a really large number, then you know you've got some kind of problem. And if you see it start out here, it's not the end of the world. It just means that router is most likely blocking the ICMP protocol because it's not um, allowing it through um, just to keep the, uh, the router from getting inundated with these types of packets. Um, which can happen. So it's just a, a, it's a, a network analyst call to turn that on or off or set a priority. Sometimes it's just to set it such a low priority that when other packets are coming in they're given a higher priority on the router and this just times out. Okay, so I got that one done. Now let's do, and you're noticing at the very end we're seeing similar numbers for the final destination. 27, 23 for Stanford, up here for Google, it was tw uh, 26, 25, 27. Pretty similar to what we got for ping on the final host. We're just seeing all the, the, the round trip times on the intermediary hops or network routes to get from the source, my computer, to the destination, Google, and uh, Stanford's website. Now let's do a couple more here. Let's do a trace route to www.harvard.edu. And this is going to take a little longer because it's got to go through more hops or networks. We'll notice on the Google one, I'm going to scroll up here. Um, the one to Google was 11 hops. We see that uh, right. It's a little hard to do while it's going here. You see it right there. That's Google 11, if you notice. When we go down to the next one, which was Stanford, it's 15. Look on your left side there. 15 routes or networks. And let's see. Here's Harvard. It's actually building the one for Harvard right now. I'm all caught up. And you notice the packet sniffer is kind of moving along, capturing the data as we go here. This is going to take longer because it's going across the country. And you'll see the farther you go out, the longer the delay, which makes sense. Now we're in the New York area. You can see these are the routers on the other side of the country. Washington, that's Washington, D.C. So it's eventually going to get that packet to Harvard and get on the Harvard network. And you can see, again, we got very similar statistics, 108 mil, I forget what it was when we pinged Harvard, but these numbers look pretty close. Okay, now let's do the last one. Ping www, do you remember which one it was? I believe it was Moscow State University, .ru. This one will buy, by the way, 20 hops or networks to get to Harvard's website that we had to jump through. These are all the pathways along the uh, network route uh, to get to the destination. This one will by far be the longest because it has to go overseas and we're going to get the longest uh, trip time, return trip time delays. You're seeing all the various routers that we're going through to get from source to destination. We're actually going uh, to a different continent and that's why we're getting these really large numbers uh, in terms of delay on the network because we're going such a long distance. 
it took 22, that's not too bad, 22 hops or networks to get from my house to Moscow in Russia and get to that Moscow State University. And you'll notice the final number here is pretty similar to what I got when I pinged it. So what we're seeing here are all the intermediary results for basically pinging each individual router along the network path from source to destination. So it's a little more comprehensive than ping, and it's good for troubleshooting. Again, if you were a network analyst or administrator troubleshooting your network, this third one here looks like a big problem. Look at the delays on that. So there could be a problem. I think that's Comcast. It could have been a glitch. Let's check some of the other ones for Comcast. Yeah, look at here, Comcast, uh, that number was really high, so it's kind of jumping around, and these are very low. As long as it's not consistently high, I'm not too worried. Uh, here you see it's very low, so it seems it's just kind of spiked there for a minute. It's probably not a problem, but if you saw the same router interface repeating itself to be very slow, uh, you would have a problem, and that's kind of what's good about this program. I went a little too far here. What's good about this program is you get a lot more information to analyze than you do with ping you can actually look for trends and look for areas where the delay is significant. I'm not too worried about these numbers because we're overseas so these numbers in the 200s, uh, even some in the high mid to high 200s, uh, not really an issue because, oh by the way I need to stop my capture, I better stop that. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of Traceroute and Ping. You see they both, uh, why don't we before I stop, let me go see if Traceroute is ICMP. Uh, I'm gonna go back and look here kind of start way up at the beginning here. So I'm going through and you can see that the ping requests um, are, it actually is still a ping request. Um, Traceroute uses ping, it's just kind of a ping to each router and you can see just like in the other example uh, with when we actually use ping that it is the ICMP protocol, Internet Control Message Protocol and you can see we're sending ping packets. Um, the, the length is a little different of the frames uh, but basically it's the same uh, process, okay? It's 64 bytes actually, as opposed to 32 with ping, but the process is the same. It's sending these ping packets, they're a little bit bigger, but basically it's sending a series of ping packets to each router, and you can see clearly that's the ICMP protocol involved in all these connections. So just kind of scrolling through here, you can see ICMP is kind of repeating itself over and over and over okay and you can see all these are 64 byte links so uh, ICMP with uh, Traceroute uses a slightly different packet size double actually uh, from ping but it's the same idea so I think we're going to go ahead and stop now and uh, that's our overview of Traceroute uh, as a troubleshooting uh, method for identifying issues on the network